In this video, I want to go over an extremely good book on abstract algebra. This is not really a popular book, and you've probably never heard of this book. It's called A First Course in Abstract Algebra, and it's written by Hiram Pillay and Paul Weichel. I picked up this book several, several years ago, and I used it extensively. Let's take a look inside this awesome book. Here is the inside cover. You can see the author's names. University of Illinois. That's a really good school. And there's the title of the book once again. Here you can see the copyright of the book. You see it's a really, really old school book. It was made long, long ago. This is the table of contents. So it starts off with set theory. I'll go through it slowly so you can see all of the topics. Then it goes on to number theory, which is quite useful in several areas of abstract algebra. It's kind of nice that, that they do review it. I've had uh, abstract algebra books that don't review the number theory. They kind of like wait until you absolutely need it, which is also okay. Then it talks about composition of functions and permutations. This is actually where the book um, gets a little bit weird. Uh, the notation that the authors use for functions is a little bit different uh, than what you see in other books. And I'll show you that uh, once we take a look further in this book talks about group theory, all the basic stuff. Then it jumps into ring theory, and it covers quite a bit, a lot more than many of the beginner books cover. Then we have some further topics in group theory, such as the Silo theorems. Also talks about normal series. I've actually used this book uh, when I was studying normal series in grad school. And it talks about some other stuff here. Wedderburn's theorem, nice. Very, very nice. So the book takes a really interesting approach when it comes to the way it's laid out. So for example, this is 2.6, which is on the greatest common divisor and the Euclidean algorithm. So it goes through, gives you some definitions, as most books do. Gives you a proof. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn the page now, so you see what I'm talking about. So there's the end of the proof, and it says we leave part of the uniqueness as an exercise. And then they give you some exercises. And then the section continues, so there's still more here. Okay, and there's more over here. Still the same section, 2.6. And go ahead and turn the page. And then we have more exercises. So the exercises aren't necessarily at the end of the section. You see, now we start the next section. So you have sections, and they're broken up in random ways. And I think the authors do this because they feel like after a certain amount of knowledge, you should be doing some exercises. And so the entire book uh, is laid out uh, in this fashion. And I think that's kind of cool because you, you read a little bit and then you do some problems. You read a little bit and you do some problems. So it's really, really like you're reading like these micro sections in some sense. It's a really nice way to write a book and to work through a book. Read for a little bit, do some problems, and then you just repeat. Another really huge benefit, and I'm back at the table of contents here, is that the sections are so short. Look at the look at the page numbers. So 142, 144, 146, and you see all the topics. So if you're using this as a reference, it's really, really good. Oftentimes, you can just open the table of contents and you can find exactly what you're looking for. And that's mainly how I initially used this book. I used it mainly as a reference when I was studying abstract algebra. It was only until later that I decided, hey, I really enjoy this book. Let me just read it. I always thought ring theory was really, really interesting. And so when I was an undergraduate, I did some independent research with a professor on ring theory. And this book uh, really, really helped me through that. I found that this book had a lot of information on rings that other books didn't. And I spent uh, a great deal of time uh, reading through this book. So it's a really, really good readable book. And it's also a really good reference. Now, there are some downsides to this book and some of them are kind of annoying. Let's go ahead and talk about that. So here is one of the things that I found kind of uh, frustrating, and it's not a big deal, maybe I'm being picky, but if you see there it says IMF, that's the image of F, and it's equal to the set containing all elements of the form AF, such that A is in capital A. So normally you'd write that as F of A, right? You're evaluating the function at A. So they, their function notation is backwards, and this is very um, not typical. This is typically not what you see. In fact, I think this might be 
the only abstract algebra book I have, I might have another one, um, but I think this might be it, that does it uh, this way. So they do everything backwards. Now it's not a big deal, right? Because in theory you should be writing your own proofs, but it makes it a little bit harder to follow and it's just a little bit disappointing. You know, math is already really, really tough. So I prefer when the authors uh, <laughs> do things the way uh, that I do them, or at least in a more standard way. Another thing that I really didn't like, and again, it's probably me just being picky, but it's okay, right? We're allowed to be picky. The way that the author multiplies permutations is backwards in my view. So um, I like to multiply cycles uh, right to left. Uh, here, all the multiplication takes place left to right. Other times, uh, this is also done, for example, uh, in the book by Frelay, uh, Frelay does the multiplication the same way. Or even a more concrete recent example, if you go on the internet and you go to Wolfram Alpha, uh, the multiplication of cycles is done left to right, not right to left, as in my view it should be, which is the more standard way. So just nitpicking here, but those are, I think, the two things that really uh, bothered me the most uh, about this book. However, this is an excellent book, and it reads really, really well. Another negative of this book, and I hate to seem so down on this book because I really, really like this book. This is one of my favorite books, is that it doesn't have um, solutions to the exercises in the back. So you can't really uh, check your work. Now, despite these, these three negatives, which I mentioned, you know, the, the function notation, the cycle multiplication, and the lack of solutions to exercises, I still think this is one of the better abstract algebra books uh, ever made. Um, the way this book reads is really, really good, and the way it's laid out makes it a pretty good reference. Also, it does contain some topics that you don't find in other books. Let me show you. Here is an example of something that you typically don't find in uh, beginner, uh, undergraduate uh, level books. It's Wedderburn's theorem, right? You don't typically see stuff like that in a book being used at a school to teach abstract algebra as an undergrad. So it contains extra knowledge and you're exposed to extra math, you know. Uh, maybe you won't cover it in college, but that's okay. Maybe you can just read it on your own and if you don't understand all of it, it's okay. At least you know it exists and you know what's out there. And that's better than not knowing. Here's another example of something you typically don't find in basic intro books. Projective and injective modules. Since the 1940s, a new branch of algebra, known as homological algebra, has attracted the attention of a great many investigators. So though its origins lie in algebraic topology, etc., 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 so it goes on and it discusses some of this stuff. And I'm sure you've seen these diagrams in many books. You see stuff like this in more advanced books. But it also appears in this book, and I believe this is an introductory book, which just happens to contain uh, a lot more uh, advanced mathematics as well. So even though this text contains a lot of more advanced mathematics, it is written as an introductory book. In fact, uh, this is the section on equivalence relations and partitions, so it goes through all of the theory and it defines everything very, very carefully. So it's good for beginners in that sense. Even the title of the book, a first course in abstract algebra. So it's meant to be, you know, a first exposure, at least in the 60s, right? This is a 1960s abstract algebra book. The index in the book is also quite useful. So let's say you're doing some homework on uh, group homomorphisms and you want some more examples or you want to see, you know, uh, some proofs of similar things so you get some strategies under your belt. You can look up stuff, you know, in the index. So homomorphism group 107, let's go look at that. So here you are, it takes you right there. I suppose you could have also used um, the table of contents because it's broken up so nicely. So the index is pretty good. Um, it takes you where it needs you, uh, where you need to be. Not all books are that way. For example, the book by Michael Arton uh, does not have a very good index. It's not a very good reference. While it's a great book, it's not a great reference. This is a great reference, and it's also a great book. Again, the main disadvantages, as you see here, are the uh, unusual, in my view, function notation. The size of the book is right, too. Um, it's a good size. You can carry it around. If you like to do math outside like I do, um, you can easily fit this in your backpack and take your bike and go for a bike ride and sit under a tree in the shade 
and read some abstract algebra. Wish you could smell this book. It smells really good. It's got the smell from the 60s. The book also has a nice treatment of the axiom of choice and Zorin's lemma. So that's kind of cool. This is where it starts. Let me turn the page so you see. Then it has the axiom of choice. It defines a partial ordering. And then it states Zorn's lemma for you. And then it proves the following. Let R be a ring with one, then R contains a maximal ideal. So it gives you everything in like, not even two pages if you count the one before this one, because this is just a little piece here. So you have a little piece here, a full page here, and a three-fourths of a page here. So in two pages, you have the axiom of choice, the definition of a partial ordering, Zorn's lemma, and a proof. So really concise, really nice treatment. And again, this is something that would often be skipped in a typical uh, first course in abstract algebra. So uh, if you're looking for another book on abstract algebra, uh, I highly recommend this one. So who is this book for? I think this book is for anyone who wants to learn abstract algebra and anyone taking abstract algebra. Now, if you're looking for a beginner book on abstract algebra, I would say get this one and then get a couple more. I don't think uh, this one is enough. I mean, in theory it should be, uh, but it's better to have a couple books on the subject and a couple more beginner, beginner books than this one to help you along. I mainly, again, started by using this one as a reference and then after I realized it was so good, I'm like, wow, this book is really good. Uh, I can't believe how good this book is. And then I started reading it for pleasure uh, over the years. It's still one of my favorite books. Again, it's a first course in abstract algebra by Pillay and Weishel. You can probably get this book for just a few dollars. I'm pretty sure this book is like not popular. And as soon as I make this video, as soon as I stop the camera, I'm gonna go on Amazon and I'm gonna look to see if they still make this book because I think they don't. That's my theory. I hope I'm right because then I said the wrong thing in the video. But I'm pretty sure like they made this book in the 60s and it wasn't reproduced because I've never heard of anyone else uh, having this book. I mean, I, I, I'm the only person I know that owns it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and you should totally get this book. Good luck.